you're you're sitting a heck of a lot higher than I am. Yeah, because this has like, <laughs> I mean, this is made for fishing, so yeah, it's like one of the really stable kayaks. Like I can stand and kind of paddleboard on it. But that's what I got it for, mainly for fishing. You might have to demonstrate that trick later. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Obstacle number one. A lot of trash caught up in this thing too. That's a shame. All right. I'm just sitting back and taking footage because you know this may some magic may happen here. I got to get it on camera. <laughs> I'm good for it. That's the thing. <laughs> you up to your ankles in mud? Pretty much. Huh. Let's try it. All right. The bank. The bank is harder than the river. We'll give it a shot. Since you were brave enough to give this the first try, I will go check out the log. <laughs> this is a shame. What? Oh, the tire? Well, just all of it. There's yeah. bottles and glass and a tire and... It'd be great to come through here with uh, a bunch of canoes that you could actually load up with stuff. You got this. Yeah, see you make it look easy. First obstacle cleared. Good morning. Tim's going backwards. This is Tim, aka Yak Cruising. And I'm getting ready to drift into a tree. I'll be right back. <laughs> so now Tim's drifting into a tree. All right, trying this so, again with trees out of the way. Yak cruising. Uh, he and I have sort of met Instagram, YouTube, that kind of yeah. thing, and uh, decided to try to get together. And uh, this isn't, I wouldn't call this the upper Patuxent. We're on the middle Patuxent River. Well, no, because there is an actual middle Patuxent River. So we're on the Patuxent River, but we're on the middle stretch of the Patuxent River. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. We are uh, just east of Washington, D.C., um, and maybe 40 miles upstream from where I live, where the river is Very big. tidal and saleable and all of that. So, um, yeah, so we're checking it out. This is This stretch is new to both of us. Yeah, so I have a question for you. Yes. If I recall correctly, you have been doing some of those um, uh, like river environmental studies where you do like the macro invertebrate counts and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yes. Can, oh, I just hit a log. <laughs> <laughs> Can you describe what's involved in that? Yeah, so um, it's or macro invertebrate sampling is what you know, most organizations do to check, I guess, the health of the river because depending on which small macro invertebrates are present, it'll tell you how clean our, the water is. Uh oh. So, yeah, so that's why I was helping organizations do that. And it's really fun. It's, it's really cool to see all the small little critters that you'll find hiding under the rocks in these cold water streams. They're usually in the upper stretches of the uh, tributary. 
like so, the first order streams, not ones like this. So, so this is challenging to talk and paddle and avoid oh, sunken yeah. logs all at the same time. <laughs> but hold that thought. As soon as we get through this next little riffle, I got an, a follow up. <laughs> Like that. I'm sure the sound of those log drags uh, carried into the camera quite a bit. There you go. I hit both of those, by the way. Okay, so less obstacles. Follow-up question. If you're doing one of these surveys, can you describe what that actually involves and what do you do? Yes, so you need to have a very special net. And you need to go to a small stream that's really just a trickle. I mean, less than, you know, definitely less than one foot and height. You need to kind of look under rocks, pick up those rocks and kind of scrape them off with a net right behind it. Okay. So you need to be... So um, you scrape them into the water and the current washes them into the net? Yes. Okay. And, um, and then once you have them in the net, you have to go and extract them from the net. It's a whole different process of uh, kind of getting them in a small little container. Okay. Sometimes you're going to have a whole bunch of leaf debris and stuff in there, but um, you'll start to see them, but they're very, very small. So what, what, kind, small. Of, what kind of thing? It's a macro invertebrate suggests big, but we're talking tiny things that are just not... Well, how, how, what, what kind of things are you looking for? So there's like small little worms, there's little nymphs, uh, stoneflies, and in the larval stage, they're really small. Okay. And so by counting what's there and what different types, you can kind of get a sense of stream health. Yep. Have you That's done that? There. Have you done that on this river? Not on any tributary of the Patuxent. The ones I was doing it on were for uh, the South River in Annapolis and the Anacostia watershed. Okay. So. And do you get insight into the results of those or do you just participate in the counting and then you're done? Yeah, I just participated in the counting because it was actually a part of our uh, a watershed stewards class I was in at Anacostia Watershed Society. Okay. So one of our classes was to go and test the macro invertebrates in the Paint Branch tributary of Anacostia. That sounds cool. Yeah. Nice. It's just a way of tracking what's been going on. If the same macros are still there, or if there's different ones there, if they're losing any. So, yeah, it's a, so it's, it's a good test. So it's both a snapshot and a trend. Yes. Cool. Yep. Neat. I would love to see what it's like for the protection, though. Yeah. And it's a pretty river so far, but yeah, you beauty's only skin deep, right? <laughs> I guess I'd better back up and slow down here. Watch for the spiders. So I got over here trying to clear the way and now I'm stuck. <laughs> Every time I get my bow up in here, it grabs my stern and wants to push me up under there, under the tree.
Woohoo! Success! We don't know what this access point is, but there's one here. Huh. Have to check it out. Pretty good little drop. Obstacle number two. Yeah, you are. Let me see if I can limbo here. Or at least, you know, do like we did last time. Yeah. Might be better off following the groundhog on this one. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I couldn't do it without getting out of the boat e either just trying to figure out it's it because of the the two trees it's not something where you can just sit on log and go over either that's right it takes two people for that one there's the obstacle just upstream and this bank is not easy it's steep and it's high but we did it obstacle number three Way to find the weak ones for me. <laughs> you think? Uh, it's. I think you're better off going, yeah, I think you're right. Going all the way across looks good. run into something and stop say something at just at this speed I'm liable to run up on you quick <laughs> I saw that one Red-tailed hawk just dropped out of the trees in front of you. Really? Yeah. All right, this is the downstream portion of portage number five. Two, two uh, logs in the river right next to each other. Yeah, getting in was actually uh, tougher than I thought there. Sorry. No, sorry. There's the there's the mess for obstacle number five. Okay. After two hours and forty five minutes. We have reached the bridge that we thought was just around the corner. 
and uh, what was it five five times out of the boat to get over logs and around stuff this is not where our car is by the way Well, let's try to figure that out. This is a noisy bridge. All right, so the, uh, the river's a lot windier than we thought. Um, we're only, we're less than the halfway point and we've been going for almost three hours, so um, we're going to come up with a backup plan. We're sitting under the bridge here. It's noisy, but meanwhile, Tim is showing off his Venetian gondolier skills. I'll be here all week, so if you want to see mine. <laughs> no, no, I want to I want to hear an appropriate Venetian gondolier song. Come on. <laughs> well, I'm still starting out, so I haven't really learned. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> haven't gotten to that part of the training yet. First time all day we would both be in the same shot. <laughs> The walk of shame. Ah. Something's biting my. <laughs> so, walk the walk of shame. <laughs> we did, we did not get where we wanted to get. <laughs> but thank goodness oh, for, man. thank goodness for Uber. Yeah. Pull out about halfway and get a ride to the car, and now we'll go retrieve boats. But, yeah, a lot more portaging, a lot more windy river than we anticipated. But it was beautiful. Yeah. I'd go back and do it again. Oh yeah, definitely. I'd just leave a car in a different spot, maybe, <laughs> or or plan on more time. That's the thing. So, anyway, it's a cool trip. Saw a lot of cool things. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there was um, herons, uh, osprey, saw a bald eagle. Uh, we think the first one was a groundhog, but the second one was definitely a yeah, beaver. Definitely. definitely swimming across the river, and we got close, and he, like, tail slapped and dove underwater. <laughs> that was pretty cool. So, yeah, it's a good day. Good day. We'll have to try it again. Tim, great to meet you. Yeah, same to you. Yeah. All right, the trials and tribulations continue. Tim's car is down that way. Behind this gate <laughs> that somebody has locked up. <laughs> so we are now waiting on park police to come let us in. <laughs> and hopefully they won't show up and say, all right, here's your citation. <laughs> I just hope they yeah. have a key. I'm like, oh, I don't have the, the key to this one. Or, yeah, oh, that's, locks. Bob has the key. <laughs> well, either true. either one of those locks will set us free, right? That is true. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll, well figure we it out. Well, we made it. Um, the uh, wait for the park police turned out to be about 40 minutes uh, before they were able to show up and let us back in. and. Nobody. We, we all agree that wasn't malicious, uh, but uh, somebody probably just absentmindedly locked the gate behind them. But either way, we were stuck. Anyway, we got out. Um, uh, I would not use 214 as a put-in or a take-out. That's an awful place. It's just a steep embankment. It's full of trash. It's boulders, and it's just bad. So don't try. <laughs> we got them out, but um, that's not a great spot anyway. So anyway, logistically challenging, but, uh, but a fun trip. Beautiful river. Um, a little bit of trash, but you know, um, it is basically in a DC suburb. So for that, it's still kind of a wild escape, um, fairly close to the city. So um, thanks again to Tim for all the help, and thanks to the uh, Capitol Park Police <laughs> for getting us out of there. And uh, till next time, this is Flying Squirrel. So long. See ya.